In 2022, the death of Mahasa Amini, a 22 years old woman who was arrested not to wear a hijab, sparked protest in Iran. The protest quickly spread, and soon women from all walks of life were taken to the street to demand change. They were tired of living under a repressive regime that denied them their basic rights, including the right to choose what to wear. The protests were met in a heavy-handed response from the government, but the women preserved. They shattered the veil of, of oppression, showed the world they would not be silenced. The Women Life Freedom Movement is a sign of hope for more than just equal future in Iran, and it's an inspiration to women around the world. In this documentary, I met activists based in the UK, artists and victims of the regime who shared their stories and thoughts about the unstoppable woman-led uprising. I hope that by sharing the stories, we can shed light on the situation in Iran and inspire people around the world to stand up for human rights. revolution in Iran in 1979 which established the Islamic Republic. It is a theocratic dictatorship that has uh, failed to implement any aspect of human rights. We have no political freedom, we have no social freedom, we have no media freedom. Uh, we are at the moment, uh, after 44 years of this theocratic dictatorship, have faced over 120 odd thousand executions, most of them political. Um, the economy is on the verge of implosion due to endemic deep-rooted corruption and mismanagement. And more worryingly, our environment is on the verge of an irreversible collapse. And that again is down to, although the Islamic Republic will insist that it's to do with climate change, it in reality is down to mismanagement and theft and corruption once again. <laughs> To be here to fight together for the future of Iran. The Iran the Association of Iranian Human Rights and Allies has put together this event for all of us to get together and find a better future for Iran. I've been working very hard since the start of this revolution after our tragic, tragic trouble receiving the news of Gina Mansa in his death. It was a huge mistake. A usurping government has taken over Iran in 1979 without people understanding what's going to happen. But to get rid of that brutal regime was uh, extremely challenging. And they tried every single avenue through tolerance, hope, but they, they faced execution, incarceration, torture, and all manner of inhumane behavior and the end they come to the conclusion that this regime is beyond repair is beyond reform and they said the only way to have a decent life and get our country back is to overthrow the islamic republic <laughs> I mean, over 100 years ago, Iran had a constitutional revolution. That was when nobody in the Middle East was wanting such a thing. Iran has experienced a lot during the Pahlavis. Pahlavis have modernized Iran to a very, very high standard, very high level. But unfortunately, again, for historical reasons, because of what we were before, because what our neighborhood was the communist Russia and uh, the influence of them. Um, for, for, again, I tell you, this is a history book. I have to yes. tell you sure. for hours and we hours to tell you the gist of it. But the women were free before uh, the revolution. I was actually about to ask, <coughs> you've been there uh, during the transition. What, yeah. what was like Iran before? 
you know, you know, before I was as, as I am now, I mean, I went to education, university, um, work, nothing was different. I mean, in 70s, Iran, women's situation in Iran was, I mean, you, you may not believe it, but in many ways, we were ahead of some Western countries. Iran had women, if they wanted to go to work, they had, I mean, American women don't have maternity leave. We had maternity leave. We had childcare, free childcare in Iran. Uh, if women wanted to work, there were all facilities there, but, but there, there were no political freedom as such. Although the political freedom even then was 10 times better than it is now. But um, yes, there was no political freedom and that was the downside of it. I mean, my family were communists. I mean, they didn't believe in God or anything. But there were people who were believers, but they, that, didn't, uh, that didn't prevent them from being modern or without the hijab or anything. But majority of people who were rural areas and poorer people, in from, from more deprived uh, areas, they were more religious, and they were the force of the. They became the force of the revolution. People don't believe that. I mean, before 44 years ago, I mean, why 44 years ago, 50 years ago, six, 70 years ago, my mother never wore her job. She, I have her pictures. We have their pictures. My mother would, if she was alive, she would have been 100 now, maybe. And uh, my grandparents. I mean, some of the grandparents were also. I mean, um, not wearing her job. Well, 70 years of um, modernization, and Iran was in a really wonderful path to become a modern, industrial, progressive country. And the democracy would have come, you know. You, you still see Iran's influence, just even in the heartland of Europe. It's really, really uh, incredible and prolific, actually. And once I really saw what the modern people were going through, I felt I think ashamed almost that like so much pain that was hidden you know and and they don't deserve it they have a beautiful culture they're just they're thinkers they're they're thinkers by culture they're they're lovers by culture it's like watching a film we've watched before in a rerun um, we all know what's happening. We know the desperate needs of the people. We, we know how dire the situation in Iran. For example, in the September 2022 uprising, which led to an ongoing revolution, we've had children as young as eight or nine being shot dead by snipers. This is a government that kills unarmed civilians. It kills children and it rapes children with impunity. Um, the Iranians know what's going on. Before this revolution, in 2022, that started in uh, September 2022, a lot of people in the West, they didn't know what to think about Iran. They didn't know many Iranian women. They thought the women in Iran are all those who are covered up. But now I think it changed a lot. People, it opened the eyes. And now the world knows how the Iranian women are. Sometimes the death of a woman can change the world. And this time in Iran, it was the last trigger uh, for, the, for the people of Iran to go on the streets and for the Iranians abroad to get united. People in Iran are chanting, um, we, we fight, we fight, we give our life, we get our country back. My name is Panteya Modiri. I'm a journalist and I am an activist. I'm an activist because that's the least I can do to support 
the Iranian women and men in Iran. Without a political unity, you would not be able to defeat a common enemy. And the most important thing in fighting a common enemy is to put your resources together and make an orchestrated effort. Put your differences aside and work together in tandem in order to defeat your enemy, the common enemy. Otherwise, you won't succeed. And I would say it is only when you're united that your enemies would, be, would take you seriously. Although I don't speak the language fluently, um, I, I speak through my music. When I sing at these protests, at these Iranian events, I want to be the bridge between Iranian people and, and European people, you know? Nothing amazing happens um, without a team, without support for, for what we want to achieve, for how big we want this to become, um, how big it's becoming, actually. We need, we need everyone on our side to, to beat these Ayatollahs, to get them out so that we can reclaim Iran and basic human rights back. This is probably the first woman-led revolution. It's supported by the Iranian people. Be under no illusion that this is just the girls in Iran doing this. They are the interface, they are the power behind this, but it's supported by the entire Iranian nation from all classes, all backgrounds, um, and all areas of the I mean, world. women have been the full force of this revolution. Women were the initiators of this revolution because women were under pressure more than anybody, no matter what religion, what ethnicity, what, who you're from, we were equally under pressure from this government. And they are the ones who started this revolution. I'm an older generation, but the younger generation have learned from my generation, their mothers, their grandmothers, and they've learned from them. And that learning is like a saving account for them. They never forget that, they use that, they, and that their own force of revolution, and they would never let themselves to be undermined again. <laughs> و مورد ستایش مردم آزادی خواه ایران و جهان شده آزادی خواهانی که با اجرای رقص و ترانه به رنج های رفته شده واکنش نشان می دهند What's happening in Iran right now is the first time in the history of modern um, civilizations women in a country are not trying to gain women's rights they're trying to gain human rights for the whole of the country and by doing so they're trying to change an actual regime not to bring a new law and reform they're actually trying to change the regime of Iran and that's something that's never happened before but this female led revolution is being fully supported by the men in Iran and that's why it's fruitful and that's why it's reaching its goal but we have to be patient. Women led this. Thankfully, men followed and have been amazing in, in supporting women in this movement. But yeah, um, not to sound sexist, but uh, women started this. <laughs> make themselves heard by going on the streets. That's the most important strategy that they can have. Because when they are on the streets, everybody will hear them. It's, it has, of course, a lot of risks for them. But unfortunately, freedom is not, is not easy to get. You have to fight for it. And they're fighting for it with their blood, with their eyes, and with their body. In Britain, there's, there's a protest every day about something. We have so much freedom, but in Iran, when you protest, you could literally die that day. The young people of Iran understood that the only way to succeed and overthrow this brutal regime, this dictatorship, I mean, it's beyond dictatorship, is 
is to be united and to be one voice, and they are one voice. Women, life, freedom is the voice of Iranian young people. After 44 years of division and going nowhere, the only other option is unity. And it's powerful. Um, it's not quick and it's not easy and it's not painless, but they've been divided for so long. They've been fighting for so long. And it, it just kept them going in circles. And they really took a step back and understood each other's potential. A generation has changed. We are living in an information, information era. So the Iranian woman and the young generation who are not much different from the generation that we are having here in the West. So they know how, how, to, how to make themselves heard. Luckily, the social media has changed everything already. I think Iranian women are and always have been so powerful, but they've been oppressed for so long. As soon as um, the, the murder of Masa Amini was publicized, and with the power of social media as well, by the way, um, people finally started to speak out more, started to, to lose their fear. Iranian women have always been brave and have always led a lot of fights. But the Islamic regime always wanted to uh, to tell different story to the world and wanted to have another story inside Iran. But the women showed again that they are not, they cannot put silence. A revolution happens when the mindset changes and no one can put this mindset back anymore. So it's not a political movement that a monarchist or a social democratic group wants to overthrow another regime and people are not interested in. This is to do with humanity. So if it appeals to your humanity, if it appeals to your understanding of what a human is, and it appeals to your sense of freedom, we've had Italians, Spanish, Germans, French, British, Scottish, everyone united together to hold the Islamic Republic to account and to stand with the Iranians back home. Their parents, the parents of this new generation, a lot of them were against this regime. They were just fearful to go on the streets because that's what, one of the things that a dictator does. They spread fear in the society and put people in silence. But this generation shows that they are fearless. They say living in, uh, in the dictatorship is equal to death to them, for them. So they are ready to sacrifice their life for freedom. Today is Remembrance Sunday and what that means is we remember what um, people have done in sacrificing their lives for freedom. So today we remember all the people in World War I and in World War II who gave their lives. So British soldiers, Canadian soldiers, Indian soldiers that gave their lives for freedom against the Nazis. But let me tell you that those people did not give their lives so that today in Western nations we would stand back whilst innocent Iranians give their lives for freedom. It is part of the same battle. And today Iranian women and men are giving their lives for freedom. They are in a battle for freedom. And today, we stand and we pay respect to the men and the women that gave their lives in World War I and World War II. But let me tell you, part of us paying respect to those that died in World War I and World War II, part of us paying respect to them is saying, we live on with that same courage and bravery. It's been 45 years since the uh, Islamic regime has occupied, occupied Iran and um, they have brought nothing but misery and oppression to, to our country. We had, we had freedom before, 
they've taken our freedom, they've taken women's rights, and everything we had. They've taken our resources, and uh, they made Iranian people poor, miserable. Uh, they've taken our culture, and we have not, they have nothing to show for the 45 years of brutal regime. Uh, the reputation of Iran is down the drain. Internationally, everyone recognizes us as an unstable pariah, a revolutionary country exporting extremist religious thoughts. The revolutionary armed forces of the Islamic Republic, which is different from the Iranian military. The Iranian military is charged with the protection and sovereignty of Iran and its waters and borders. The Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, the IRGC, is charged with the sole protection of the theocratic regime of Tehran. represent Iran, our borders, our lands, but they represent a vile, barbaric ideology and they're exporting that. And we've seen the exportation of their arms to Iraq, the destability they've caused in the Middle East, the genocide they have created in Syria, which I, I think should be regarded as a genocide and a crime against humanity. The Islamic Republic not only represses women, but men, children, and LGBT community. We all have suffered one way or another in the hands of this regime. We still fight, the fight continues against the oppression, and we want to be the voice of Iranian people. We want to be the voice of those who have not been heard. We as the Iranian community um, outside of Iran, have the freedom and the opportunity to be their voice. We ask the free world and the governments uh, of the European Union and particularly the UK government to support our cause to bring freedom and human rights to Iran and to Iranian people. We stand on the right side of history. The Iranian regime should know that, that they cannot do anything to stop this generation from wanting freedom. If you had a message for the Iranian government, right to the camera. Go b'chor Khamenei. Can you translate like that? Eat shit, Khamenei. <laughs> Today, shatter this silence, act for Iran's future. Stop all executions. Join Amnesty Iran and activists urging UN to demand an end to execution, a tool of political repression. Expel diplomats. Sign a petition urging G7 leaders to remove Iranian diplomats protesting in human treatment. Support women's rights. Write your representatives. Stand with Iranians in the fight for human rights. Social media. Follow advocates' account. Spread the knowledge and support for Iranians' men and women. Share protests. Amplifying the voice of change. Share hashtag Mahsa Amini, hashtag Iran protest and more. Together, Break the chain, ignite the change, and light up Iran's path towards the brighter tomorrow. For women, for life, for freedom.